Hey guys, Magnetoka here, and welcome to a series of videos where I'll be upgrading video game systems. And what better way to start that than with the original, the big boy, the Xbox system here. Um, very modifiable. Uh, you can upgrade a lot of the components on the inside. Uh, soft modding it is not very difficult at all. If this is your kind of thing, make sure you hit that subscribe button. That way you're notified every time I post one of these videos. So with this particular system, uh, I've already had this for, for a while. The last time I cleaned this up was maybe like four months ago. I've already upgraded the, the, the hard drive into it, the IDE cable. There's all these upgrades I've already made, but don't worry because I am going to upgrade it with a new solid state drive as well. So eventually I will be making a uh, hard drive or component upgrade video as well. But for this particular video, uh, we're going to open it up. Let's say you bought it secondhand or maybe you've had it sitting inside of a basement for a while and it's completely dusty. It's dirty. You want to see what's going on inside. You want to make sure it works. So uh, this video is going to basically be just opening up the system, uh, taking out the components, uh, blowing out dust from it, cleaning up, clean, cleaning up the circuits and everything else that, that might be, I don't know, leaking or just looking really dirty at the time, just so we can have a clean, clean system to start with before we actually start the soft mods or upgrading components um, or anything of the sort. So the first video, cleaning it up. Second video, soft mod. Third video, we'll be upgrading the components, uh, upgrading the hard drives, things like that. Maybe there'll be a fourth video while I upgrade grade uh, the video out uh, there's an HDMI mod out there which is like you have to solder some ribbons um, and it looks really clean for the end results and I have been getting into soldering a lot but I feel like it's it's a it might be a little bit too advanced for me for now but I'm not scared if we get to that point and you guys want it we will do it so for now let's go ahead and start with cleaning up the system and before we even do that let's just go ahead and test it out boot it up see if it even works So I'm going to go ahead and turn on the system here and it looks like it boots just fine through the blob screen here. So I'm going to go ahead and try to see if it'll load up to the menu. All right, menu looking good. I'm going to go ahead and try a disc and it looks like Halo here is loading up just fine. So that's good. Our system is working fine. So here I'm doing a bit of a wellness check here just to see what kind of scratches and scuffs I'm dealing with here. Everything looks pretty minor for the most part. I'm also looking at the uh, back part here to see if there's anything that's been deteriorated, but everything looks good. So let's go ahead and get started. There are two screws that are actually hidden under the stickers, which is unfortunate, but it's like a warranty thing, I assume. So you're going to have to deal with the fact that you're going to have these two permanent holes now under these stickers, unless you want to replace those stickers. That's totally fine as well. Uh, these screws are actually pretty long. So just, you know, <laughs> be aware of that. But yeah, uh, I actually bought some stickers on Etsy that I can replace once I'm completely done with the system. And you'll find four more screws under the pads here. You have to kind of rip them off a little bit there. Just be careful. Uh, I obviously bought some more pads in case um, these were ruined on Etsy as well. So you can buy them on eBay as well. So go ahead and take out the rest of the screws here as shown below and you should be able to open the system once you remove all six screws total. So now we can go ahead and flip the system over and the hood should come out pretty easily as long as you pull up. So let's put the shell away for now. And right under the, the ribbon, there should be a screw we can go ahead and take out. We're gonna take out three of these total. So the first one under the ribbon, the second one will be located to our right here, uh, kind of tucked in to the side of the disk drive. I definitely recommend magnetic magnetic uh, screwdrivers. Uh, the last one's gonna be located in between the hard drive and the disk drive here. I have done this without the magnetic screwdrivers and it is doable, but it's more of a pain. Magnetic screwdrivers definitely uh, win here just cause you can pull out everything so easily. So we're gonna go ahead and pull out the ribbon next. Mine is gonna look a little bit different than yours cause mine is modified, but basically there's a ribbon hooked up to the back of the hard drive. Remove that gently. And also behind the hard drive will be the power cord. You can go ahead and unplug that as I'm doing right now as well. Again, yours is going to be a little bit different. Uh, on your end, the ribbon should be hooked up to the back of the hard drive just like this. So take that out and the power. Uh, the cradle should come up pretty easily, but the cord is hooked up to it like this. So you kind of have to, you know, just undo it and the cradle should come up pretty easily. The actual disk drive 
uh, just go ahead and pull that straight up. It looks like it's a little bit uh, kind of stuck in there, but if you pull up, not too hard, but kind of just like wiggle it out of there, it should come right out. Uh, now be careful because the there is a power cord connected to it and also the other uh, ribbon. So what I like to do is just disconnect it from the, from the actual motherboard gently like this. And we can go ahead and also just put this guy aside once we're done. I'm gonna go ahead and take out this yellow cable here, set it aside. Again, obviously you're gonna wanna make sure you hang on to these items here, but there's gonna be a couple screws that are hooked up to the, the motherboard itself that are holding the motherboard to the actual shell. I like to start from the outside, uh, but you can go in any order you want. So I'll just go ahead and fast forward through this. Okay, so now that we took out all the screws, we're going to go ahead and unplug all the cords here. This is for the controllers, one and two. This is the big one. This is the power supply that is hooked up to the motherboard. This powers the whole thing. So this one's a little bit hard. There's a clip to it. Uh, just kind of pull gently, wiggle it out. And this is controller ports three and four, and then the power cord for those. But at this point, um, you know, I, I forgot, but the video out also has two screws you have to take out. This is for the uh, video component or AV cable, whichever one you're using. Uh, take those out, and afterwards, if you pull the motherboard out gently, it should come right out, as shown here. Look at that. It's beautiful. Now we're going to go ahead and take out two screws holding the power supply together. Uh, only held by two screws, which is great. Uh, just kind of move some of these wires out of the way so you can get that other screw kind of tucked in there. But after you take out those two, you should be able to slide that right out. Oh yeah, this thing is hefty. It's heavy duty for sure. All right, and finally the fan. Uh, there's no easy way to do it. Yet. Uh, the best way I found out, I have to get these two clips um, basically spread. And once you put these two uh, tools in there like this, you can use screwdrivers or flathead. So you need two tools. It just comes right out really easily. Uh, with one, it's kind of a pain. But here I'm gonna go ahead and just dust off all the dust bunnies. Um, yours is probably gonna be cleaner or dirty than mine. Like I said, I just cleaned mine like two or three four months ago so mine's pretty clean still take your time use a toothbrush use q-tips whatever you got to use to get this super clean to at least look uh you know a little bit like mine make sure you get the other shell taken care of as well so that way our shell is complete so at this point i'm going to go ahead and hit the motherboard with a q-tip and isopropyl alcohol uh, manufacturers tend to leave uh, residue from like the the flux that they use to kind of solder a lot of these items together which is totally fine it doesn't hurt anything but um, as you can see here, I'm definitely getting a lot of that gunk out of this motherboard. So uh, you can probably already see it, but I'll show you here in just a second how dirty this Q-tip actually looks once I'm kind of done doing a, my first round here. Pretty dirty. Absolutely filthy. Uh, here I'm doing a capacitor check just to make sure they're not blown out. Uh, make sure they're sitting upright and everything. But if they are blown out, um, make sure you watch a video on how to replace them. They're not too difficult to replace. But after that, I'm going to hit this with a toothbrush. Go ahead and speed that up for you guys. But yeah, isopropyl alcohol and a toothbrush very lightly. I'm not brushing very hard. And then I'll go ahead and just do the finishing touches on this here in some of these crevices and hard to reach areas with some more isopropyl alcohol and a Q-tip. Flip the motherboard over and we're going to go again with the toothbrush and the isopropyl alcohol here. Uh, just make sure you get all those really hard to reach areas very gently uh, doesn't have to be crazy just get all the dust off of it and also make sure you get all that all that gunk and leftover residue and finally here just hit it with the q-tip and make sure you get all the areas clean for this one. now you can go with the toothbrush and isopropyl alcohol on the power supply here you can go a lot harder on this one just because it's so heavy duty and there's so many crevices uh, everywhere on this thing so um, I definitely went a lot harder on this one yeah, just to make it clean and on the back I also went pretty hard as well so yeah I still put alcohol and a toothbrush then I do a quick capacitor check to, just to make sure that none of them are blown out and make sure that they're all standing upright and ready to go and next here we're gonna do the cradle for the hard drive uh, usually these get pretty dusty as well so i try to get into all the crevices if you want to use a toothbrush or a toothpick that's totally fine as well but here i'm using a micro fiber cloth here to clean it up and you can snap off the disk drive cradle on this guy just so you can make sure you get every crevice 
um, that might have dust inside of it. So here I am getting all those hard to reach crevices for this guy. But once uh, once it's done, you can go ahead and snap the hard drive back in there um, pretty easily. And here we go. We got all our components. We got the disk drive. We got the hard drive. We have the power supply ready to go and put back into the system. And most importantly, of course, is the motherboard here is nice and clean everything is has been dusted off and i love it so we're going to go ahead and put in the power supply in first the same way we're going to slide it back in the same way we slid it out make sure nice and snug i got some wires kind of caught at the bottom here so i'm going to go ahead and get these out of the way here but you'll know it's it's nice and snug uh, if it doesn't move around uh, but once you have it the way it's supposed to be you can go ahead and put the screws back in here and then for the secondary screw, I'll have to move this uh, jungle of wires out of the way here because they're all just like there. Uh, the power supply has a lot of wires coming out of it. So just be careful. But yeah, once you find an opening, go ahead and put that secondary screw. So the power supply is neatly seated into the, the case here. And I'm going to go ahead and put the fan back in here. I'm going to put these clips in from the top here. This is a modified uh, fan. So yours could just slide from the top to the bottom and clip right in. But if you have this same mod for the silent fan, I usually have to put the clips in at the top first and then just press down so it can clip into place. So now it's nice and snug. Looks like it's good to go here. I'm gonna move some of these wires out of the way here because next thing we're gonna do is putting the, the motherboard. I like to put it in at an angle, make sure that the video and the ethernet port go in first like this. And once you find that, you know, it found the openings there, you can go ahead and just keep moving these wires out of the way. Uh, but it should fall into the case pretty neatly there. So again, uh, it's a struggle bus with these wires. But um, if once you drop it down, you still have time to move, remove the wires like I just did with that one there. So we're going to put all the screws back together in the same, uh, not the same order, but the same locations that we did earlier. And we can start plugging in some of these wires here. I'm plugging in the wire for controllers three and number four the power connector for those wires and I'm going to plug in the cable for controllers one and two and then finally I'm going to go ahead and clip in the power supply make sure you push that all the way in make sure the clip snaps in the place and I won't forget about these screws like I did earlier but I'm going to go ahead and, and screw the the video port screws here one and number two here like we did earlier this is for the AV cable area and don't forget, and very important, do not forget to plug your fan back into the motherboard so it powers up and keeps your system nice and cool there. And I'm gonna go ahead and take this yellow wire here and I'm gonna go ahead and plug this back in. This should be the final wire we plug in before we start putting in all the big components back together. So the first big item we're gonna put into the system is going to be the disk drive. And as you can see, I'm feeding the ribbon to the back of the disk drive and this top portion here. I'm going to go ahead and just move out of the way. We don't need it right now, but the bottom I like to fold kind of like this. I'm going to go ahead and plug in the power cord to the back of the disk drive. And we're just going to go ahead and float it over the motherboard so I can go ahead and plug the bottom ribbon into the motherboard itself. So I like folding it like that. That way there's no ribbon just floating all over the place. It's in one place. Um, and it's nice and neat as I seat this here. You can see just it's just completely out of the way This is like a really clean setup that I discovered. So I'm gonna go ahead and feed this power core through the Hard drive cradle, but first thing is we're gonna go ahead and make sure it is seated properly Sometimes it likes to be a little bit crooked So I always double check as you can see there it was a little bit crooked So I went in and fixed it just to make sure everything was parallel if it's crooked uh, Make sure you fix it before you put the the top shell back on and for now, we're going to go ahead and fold this ribbon. I was having a little bit of trouble with this, but all, at the end of the day, all I did was follow the creases that were already there from the previous fold. And I was able to put the ribbon to the back of the hard drive pretty easily after that. So just a little bit of advice on that. But as you can see, it's nice and clean, nice and folded. And it's just a beautiful looking system right now. But I'll take the power cord and I'll feed it through all these hooks that are on the shell or the cradle, I should say. Feed it all the way to the back, that way it's powered up. And as you can see, the system is now completely plugged in. So I'll go ahead and put these three screws back together. Don't forget about the one under the ribbon, and then I'll put the top shell back in. So I always like to check my work 
uh, as I said before. So I'll go ahead and do a quick check on the front of the system just to make sure everything is seated properly. Nothing's bulging out uh, before we put the main screws back together. But after that, we'll take those six screws that we took out initially, the big long ones. And there we go. We have a completed system. So before I finish that off, I always like to do one more cleanup with the toothbrush and isopropic alcohol. Make sure we get all the nice, uh, you know, get all the smudges out of the way there. But once it's done, look at this pretty guy. Oh, yeah. I just want to say thank you so much for coming by and watching me restore this system back to a pristine and clean state. If you guys followed along, uh, hopefully this was a useful or at least educational video for you guys. If this is your kind of thing, make sure you hit that subscribe button because there are going to be more Xbox videos to follow. But we're going to go ahead and do the soft bod. That'll be the next video for sure. So again, thank you so much. Uh, leave a comment below. Let me know what you guys thought about the video. And until then, I will catch you guys on the next one. Bye bye.